So the first method that I'm going to show you is going to be pretty simple. It's going to be a one click um, fix. I'm in Adobe Photoshop and I think this method is going to be great for people that um, maybe either you don't care about the fine details and making sure they're all dialed in perfectly. Maybe you have high volume that you need to just put out. Um, this is great. So we're going to hop over to filter, go to neural filters, which is Adobe's way of saying artificial intelligence down here, just colorize. So boom, right there, really cool results. Really, really fantastic. I mean, they put her dress is red right there in the background. Um, that the overall red is, is gone. Um, so again, this is really great. I mean, wow, you just put right into that scene. So now let me show you my method, which is a little bit more fine tuned. Okay, so jumping right into it, I'm gonna hop over to my curves. Right here are the color curves, and this one is our Y curve. This is gonna just affect general contrast and everything. These are gonna affect the red channels, green channels, blue channels. Now you can see with our red channel, we have its opposite, which is gonna be a bluish teal. Now I'm gonna to start to drag this over. Immediately we can see a shift. So we just went from this to that in just one move. So it's obviously not perfect. There's a lot of flaw still in there, but it's a little bit closer to getting us to where we want to be. So from this, now I notice, okay, our general direction is a little bit closer. I can still see some green in the darker parts of the image. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hop over to my green channel. I'm gonna go over here into my shadow section. I'm gonna pull that closer towards magenta. We're gonna see that green go away. Now overall, we added a little bit more magenta to the image. So I'm gonna correct that up here. Okay, so now we just have an orange instead of that overwhelming red. So with orange, I need to add blue. I'm gonna hop over here, make a little adjustment into there. And it's gonna take some fine tuning. Okay, I think that's a little bit closer to what we're, what we're looking for. So again, this is before, this is where we're at now. Just touching the color curves. So you can see what I did. From the get-go, I raised the black point of the red channel over just so that it's not starting at such an extreme red. Made these adjustments accordingly. And then I pretty much prioritized the green and blue channels as correctors, just because the main variable was red. So from here, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit more satisfied with this image. Now, again, it's still not perfect. As, as I noted before, the dress, we're still not seeing that detail, which we could see. The skin tones are washed out. There still is just an overall theme of now orange. Granted, it's a lot less prevalent. So here's a little before and after. Right there. Already. Such a different effect when, when, when you see this. So now, what I want to focus on is now that we have a general um, direction for this image because of our curves, now let's start to go into the details. So I'm going to hop into some of our masking techniques, which we can do. Lightroom's gotten pretty great with this over the updates. So I'm going to select our subject, which should pop up as these two. All right, so now they're highlighted. It's not perfect, but that's okay for now. I'm gonna turn our highlights down and see what that gives us. Okay, now they kind of look like zombies, do they not? So what we've done, we've retained some of that detail. Now I'm going to add color back into the image. I'm noticing, okay, their skin tone looks very washed out. It's almost like a greenish blue. So what's the opposite of greenish blue? Let's add some red, add some life back in there. And again, a lot of this process is just playing around, seeing what fits. 
Okay, I'm gonna land about there. And since this is masking both of them, I don't wanna go too strong because I'm gonna do that with more, even more precise selections. But right there, that's our before, that's our after. I just wanted to get our bright point to the point where we see detail and that we get a little bit of that color back from our highlight correction. Now, from here, I'm going to select people. It's gonna recognize these two. I should go back and forth. I'm gonna start with skin tones first. So I'm gonna select her facial skin, body skin. We'll do eyebrows, we'll do lips. I'm gonna leave out the teeth. And I'm gonna leave out the hair. Okay. Same idea with the general correction for the subjects. I'm just gonna add some color back in. Okay. Something like that. Let's fix that dress even more. Same idea with the skin tones. I'm gonna select clothes and just play with it from here. I really enjoy that, bringing down the highlights because then we kind of just see everything. And I'm thinking with this, because of the strong curve corrections I made, it's giving a natural shift towards that blue greenish feel because that's what we had to do to get rid of all of the extreme red. So I'm gonna add a little bit red back in. So boom, right there. Our bride's skin tone's looking good. The dress is in detail and is not shifting heavily towards one color or the other. And this is gonna be the inherent problem with this method is because there was such a strong shift towards red in the natural state of the image, it's gonna be pretty hard to know exactly what was the color of his tie. What was the color of her flowers? Because I have a few other images to cross-reference that have different kind of colorations, I can give a pretty accurate guess, but that's going to be the overall theme of this process is a lot of guesswork and playing with color theory. So let's do our groom mat now. So now what we've done, we have our general direction established, get rid of that red, highlight our subjects through bringing down the overblown highlights because we had a good scan to work with. We had a lot of detail still left in the image. We color corrected our skin tones and our clothes just because they are the most important variable in this image. It's their day, it's their story. They should be most recognizable. When you immediately immediately look at this, you're not thinking, oh God, look at those green skin tones or look at those red skin tones. No, you're thinking, oh wow, I wonder what life was like back in 1953. So similarly to how I masked out our subjects, I'm going to do the same with the background. And Sorry, I'm help with nope. So similarly to how I highlighted our subjects, I'm gonna do the same with our background and just make some overall directional choices for us. Now again, this selection is not perfect. You can see it's getting his hair. It's getting some of their shoes. I'm gonna correct this later, but it's also just for the sake of the tutorial, not important for now. Okay, so now with our background corrected, here's a before, here's an after, just really subtle changes. I was primarily looking at this region because I noticed it is our shadow and before there was still some green coming through. So I corrected that with our green channel, push it just a little, push that black point a little bit over to the right, just so we're seeing a little bit more magenta reflected in those shadows. And with this, it's pretty cool because now our background starts to come to life. We can see that, okay, their suits have character. Each color is different. Um, 
same with our subjects in the background we could dive deep into fixing their skin tones with a similar method um, how we did our subject otherwise we can just do a brush and manually do it ourselves but yeah this is an after we came from this so pretty dramatic difference extremely dramatic difference now I could spend an hour on this and make sure every fine detail is perfect. Like I mentioned, some of the masks were overlapping, maybe cutting off some of his hair um, and some of that. But I mean, just off this first look, you're not gonna notice that. Let's do a little bit more fine details. This image, similarly to our last one, very red, except now we have a more medium shot instead of a wide shot. So details are gonna be way more important in this method. I'm going to go to my colors or color curves, start shifting this red channel more towards teal at its black point because I'm noticing there's more color difference in the darker areas compared to the highlights. So I'm going to leave it right there. See all this green in the shadows. Let's correct that over here. So since in the shadows, I'm going to take that our black point, move it closer towards magenta. And we're gonna see that go away. Now we have a little bit more correcting to do, but again, a lot better than where we came from. Just off two, two adjustments. So from here, I could keep doing some general adjustments or I could dive straight in. I'm gonna do a little bit more general before we go into the details. Okay, so this is what I ended up with. So complete before, we were at that. Now we're there. I just wanna do as least work as possible with our details. If we can have the best foundation possible, that is what we're looking for. So now that we have our foundation, let's go into our method. Let's select our subjects. All right, let's start, let's start with you. We'll do clothes. You know what? I'll show you what, what I'll do. So just how I just selected his clothes, they're in the same suits. I'm gonna go here, add people. Our subject on the right, same deal. And now we have that in the same mask. And hit O to reveal what it looks like without the mask showing. Okay, now what I can see, I can see there's a slight magenta shift. So let's correct that. Right, I'm gonna leave it right, right there. Another way that I can know where to stop when I'm doing this is I'm taking a look at their shirts, their shirts are white, same with the flowers. Once that white doesn't seem to have any hue shift going on, that's how I know, okay, I'm probably at the right spot. So with that mask, there's a before, a little bit more magenta, and after, there's a lot more color separation. So because these guys have different skin tones, I'm gonna do th those separately, but just because they have the same clothes. That makes it really easy on our end. All right. So I'm going to turn off these skin tone adjustments for these two. So that's before. Again, I didn't do too much. Just want to show that's a method in case skin tones really need some help. That's how I like to approach it. And again, like with our subject on the right, it caught a little bit of his tie. So to correct that, I can either add or subtract when the automatic mask makes some mistakes. Um, so using the brush and adjusting from there is very helpful for getting those really fine details. 
And with that, those are two great methods to correct damaged film. The first one being Photoshop, really quick and easy, a one-click solution. And Lightroom for people that are a little bit more advanced in editing and want to dial in um, every detail they can in its uh, greatest form. I have a few more tips I have listed on the article I linked with this video. Um, that link is in the description. It's on my website. Um, let me know if you want more. I have two samples I did not cover. Uh, this one from Outdoor Lighting and this one which was underexposed and extremely red. So let me know if you want me to cover those. Um, a little bit of a different approach for those two. But yeah, let me know if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment, leave a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.